It's time to finish all the carbon fiber and fiberglassing work to get this boat back on the water. Hey, good people. Okay, last week I told you I was worried about some construction not being completed. So I read the plans, and sure enough, yes, obviously I need to tab in this bulkhead. So, see all the white? That's the new fiberglass tape stuck in place. I pre-wetted the walls so that I let it sit a minute so the tape, once I cut it and put it up there just by hand, it's stuck in place. Now I'm getting this all wet. I'm working up where you can't see, reinforcing where the uh, boat lifting eye is going to go. Do that on both sides. And this area is the hull to deck join. Barrier calls for 10 inches, four and aft of each beam connection to have physical tapes in addition to the epoxy bond that's inside the seam here. I'm also taping where the two folding mechanism recesses, the upper and the lower half, are joining. That was never taped together back here. Good news is the front of the boat, all that bulkhead work was done perfectly. You can see all the work, it's exposed. And for the hour prior to doing this tape, forgot to film, but I was making the fillets, so I went down all these joins and put the epoxy, filled epoxy fillet in to make the cove, which makes 93 corners much stronger when you put the rounded cove in. I did a little bit of carbon work to this plate to connect this to this since it's been sanded down by somebody. It actually broke the carbon unions. Just replace that. Okay, first up we're going to make our jib fair leads. So we are deleting the jib track. And right here, we're going to install floating ring jib fair leads. Once this dries, we're going to come back and drill it and line the hole with a composite tube. Cool. 
So those forward ones are for the primary jib. And then we've got a super high cut, heavy weather jib, which means San Francisco summer. And that actually wants to sheet all the way back here. Put it right next to the clutches here, feeding directly to the winch. And these other pieces of tape, you can see them working out hardware placement. Daggerboard down cleat over here, a GM cleat to hold jib sheets when you need the winch for something else. Rotation control jammers over here on both sides. Now we're going to add the diagonal braces that go from the main hull out to the float hulls. There used to be uh, metal U-bolts here. Covering up the old holes. See, I drew my lines there. Or I want to reuse one of the two old holes there. beef up the front ends of these tubes because you can see the light I burned through the carbon here. So we're going to add another layer to strengthen this up. And it's these two patches for one side. Some awkward access here. We're on the home stretch of cutting all the slots in the net holding tubes. You can see down the line there, they've been cut. So my process has been to mark every four inches on center, come in with this small grinding bit in the Dremel, get the first slice made, then come back with a wider sanding one to clean it up. I have uh, these couple to do before the battery died yesterday. So here we go. And the last step here is to hand sand all these edges. Oh, let's see. Do I, I don't remember if I did these. Oh yeah, I did these yesterday. Good. That's done. So these are just extra uni strapping so that right here and here I'll put a, a loop to anchor barber haulers going that way. I have a choice of using it here, here, or here. Make sure 
sure not the last step. I still need to come through and get epoxy on all these exposed edges right here. Do that tomorrow. Okay, holes are all cut, sanded. So we're going to take some of this old F27 mast rigging and use it as the rod inside the tube for the lacing to catch on. Just working down the entire tube here. Hit, hit the end. Yes, I hit the end. Cool. Okay, so when you pull this out, you can see the gap. I'll be able to get the lacing line right around this thing. Yeah, it's gonna work great. Nice and thin and strong, free, relatively light. Free, did I say that? Good reusing of materials. A little bit of fairing on these um, barber hauler strength patches. Yesterday I glued extra rings around here. The uh, carbon was so thin you could flex this really badly. And I have Armstrong um, twist down plates coming. So this needed to be beefed up. So that's all done. Just need to sand the goop. This one already had an extra ring. Filling all those old screw holes in from the Dexon plates. That's the uh, spinnaker pad eyes gonna come out of there. We are almost done with all the fabrication steps. Today I'll split bearing compound on that wall and put all the screw holes in. That tunnel is done and so are the combing boxes. You can see the green in this one. It's got a little bit of fairing in there. Well, getting close. And so with the modernizing fabrication almost done, it's time to turn our attention to the paint job. 25 years ago this whole boat was painted this lavender mauve color in two-part automotive paint. It was a really solid paint job, but areas that sat in direct sun had a lot of fading and you can see there's hundreds of little chips in the paint all around the bodywork. So here comes the big 6 inch Makita variable speed sander and the 3M extract discs 120. Sander set down at 3000 RPM nice and slow and days of carefully sanding all the paint back. Oh darn, I found one bit of damage. You can see the carbon fiber's been cut. I have used filler in here, but as my finger goes down, there's a big dent. So we're gonna build this up with fresh carbon and fair all this in. Well, that's a two-day setback right there. Well, Ruby, it's been a long day. You played a lot of ball, and I've done a lot of sand. We have five of the six hull sides done. Starboard float, all done. We've done a two-layer carbon patch. First thing I did was to lay in a bit of thickened, cabosil thickened epoxy as the sort of filling medium underneath these two pieces of carbon. This is cured now. It's been a few hours. I'm gonna go ahead and put some carrying compound over this. I'm gonna add compound to these straps. I added these little caps yesterday, just a, one more layer of strength. So that needs some fairing. Same thing on the front. Uh, today I cut off the excess tube that was sticking up above the deck. I did that outside and inside. So these are the landing bases, I guess you call them, for the soft pad eyes that are going to happen here. That down. Here's the uh, emergency supplies hatch finished now. There's another pad eye anchor. Goes from here over to here. These are the diagonal under net strengthening lines. We'll do Dyneema instead of the wire they pulled out. That's in case the boat gets racked a little bit to stop it from being too forked. Rudder cassette is off. All this has been cosmetically cleaned. Motor area is cleaned up. Uh, let's see, both sides of the port float hull were sanded today. This is all done to 120. It's ready for primer. 
And here's the second patch, the one I did while I was on the phone with Damien in Mexico. We put thickened epoxy underneath and then one, two, three layers of carbon build out to fill in a bit of a dent that was right here. So hopefully tomorrow we'll put some filler in that, actually Sunday, and then we'll longboard this out to get the shape back. Okay, so the sanding just takes forever, but you can see all that lavender paint has been scuffed, ready to go. See how this side's shiny? That's the last one to do. My back hurts. We'll do that on Sunday. This is Friday night. And I am going sailing out to the Farallones tomorrow with two other Barry Multi Hill Association boats. We got three tries. So we've got an F22, two newer boats, a new F22, a newish F22, a very new Corsair 880, and a venerable F27. That's the forecast is for. 15 knots and flat seas coming back in. Hopefully we'll have a great 25 mile run. And you don't get to go. You're staying home with mom. Sorry. She wants Ooh. a little more ball. Still working our way through all the primary sanding prep. And here's that one patch. You can see the new carbon here. A little bit of filler. There was a tiny little low spot here yesterday, so. Just about to do one more longboard pass on that. This morning, between throwing the ball, we've spent two hours so far on the main hull side here. And just to show you how grueling it is, I figured I'd get you guys a time lapse as we finish this last shiny section here. Basically, I just need the center to float over the surface. Don't do any digging in. Just be happy with time lapse here, otherwise this would be 20 minutes of pain to watch. So while this guy sands the boat, can you guys start thinking about what we're going to do graphics wise? What do you want this thing to look like? Please comment on the video, but remember it was built in 94, so we need some good 90s colors and shapes. And with all this boat work and some big family milestones, I haven't been on the water since the Transpac finish in Hawaii. So, huge thank you to Michael and Rafi for taking me on at the last minute to crew for them on the Farallones trip on Saturday. We had a great run up to, up to the island, saw all kinds of wildlife, and so exciting to sail on the Corsair 880. Great boat, guys. And hopefully this is the last video of a splotchy, ugly-looking boat. And next time we should see a nice, monotone gray primer job. Really curious to see how she comes out. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.